Hello, this is Jake of the Forge Hub Video Crew, and today we are continuing the design talk series with the topic of asymmetric team design. The concept of asymmetric teams hasn't been too common in Halo, but when done right, it has led to some of the most beloved game types. An asymmetric team mode is basically a game mode which has uneven teams, which are determined by whether the team's player traits and or player count is different. Both Infection and Invasion are great examples of game types with differing teams. When designing for differing teams, your goal should be to make sure that every player, regardless of team, should feel like they have an effect on how the game plays. If you, say, have a game mode with one player versus everyone else in the lobby, you would naturally have to make the settings so that the one player is super powerful in comparison to the other players. But when you do that, you have successfully made your game only fun for one player, while everyone else doesn't feel like they have any impact on the game. You want to make sure all players can be effective. Each team should have some sort of way to check the other team. Both teams must have their own advantages and their own disadvantages for the game to have any depth. Infection's system of checks and balances are what create the entire balance of the mode. In Infection, the game starts with a majority of survivors, normally 10, while there is a minority of infected players, normally 2. The infected team has a high damage, short range weapons, better movement traits, and the ability to forcefully recruit players from the enemy team. However, the survivor team can attack at a medium to long range depending on their weapon. They start with high numbers, and they can deny infected players from getting more teams team members simply by surviving. Invasion also has its own sets of checks and balances. In Invasion, the first obvious trait difference to notice is that one team is composed of Spartans, and the other is formed of Elites. The Elites' traits give them faster mobility along with their starting ability to evade. Also, they have the ability to regenerate health and have higher shields than the Spartans. However, Elites also have larger hitboxes, which made, normally makes them an easier target. Along with this, the Elite's plasma weapons are oriented more towards close range than the Spartans' AR and Magnum. The Spartans' weapons tend to be more useful in ranged encounters. Each team also uses a different sandbox, and the asymmetries in the sandbox remain apparent later in the round as more classes are unlocked. All of these asymmetries correspond with the attack and defend asymmetry, which the mode revolves around. Part of the readability of making an asymmetric team mode is making the differences between the teams clear and easy to understand. In a lot of cases, you want to make the differences visual to communicate these differences. For instance, you can give players an overshield visual effect to show that their traits give them more shields. Or in Infection, you can clearly see, due to the player's energy sword, that they are dangerous in close range. This is very important so newer players can learn these differences quickly. Making differences clear such as these will make an asymmetric team game mode very exceptional to play, but that's only half the process, as you obviously need to design a map for your game mode. Maps designed for unbalanced teams are almost exclusively asymmetrical, and for the most part should only be asymmetrical. The reason for this is in the game mode has teams with differing traits and player counts. You have to design your map to support these differentiations. For example, if you have a game mode where one team has higher jump height than the other, then you obviously need to design areas that allow that jump height to be used. Your map should be designed to affect players' advantages and disadvantages. For instance, in Infection, the advantage of infected players is that they do high damage in close range. So if you design part of your map to be in close quarters, the infected will have an, the advantage in that area. So if you have an area on your map that has longer sight lines, then survivors will naturally have the advantage. Each location on your map should have an advantage and a disadvantage, or a risk and a reward. For instance, say you have a really close quarters location in an infection map, which gives infected players the advantage, but you put a shiny weapon in there, like a rocket launcher, that will give a risk and a reward. For that location, you have now incentivized survivors to move into an area which gives infected players a combat advantage, but if the survivor succeeds in getting the rocket launcher, they now have an advantage over the infected team. Risks and rewards are essential in level design as they create situations that cause players to have to make a choice, allowing for the player to determine how they play the map. Overall, asymmetric maps are essentially unbalanced maps. 
Just because one side of your map has a rocket launcher, it doesn't mean that the other side needs a rocket launcher to balance it. To make an effective asymmetric design, intentional imbalances need to be put into the design as they encourage movement and increase the necessity of choice from players. When differing traits and team counts are put into play, these imbalances become essential. We'll be talking more about how intentional imbalances affect map flow and game pacing sometime in the near future. Thank you for watching. This has been Marsh Mallcop of the Forge Hub Video Crew, and I'll see you guys next time. Laters.